Alright folks, I have a very famous laptop for you today, the ThinkPad T14S. Now since I've only a time, I'm just going to tell you what it's like right now. It's a premium 14 inch laptop designed for business and casual users. We found it very comfortable to use, but for a laptop released in 2025, it's mediocre and expensive. It's kind of thick and heavy for this kind of device, its processor is nothing special, and its screen is bad, especially at this price point. However, since ThinkPads often go on massive sales, let's get into the video to see if this laptop is right for you. But first, you may notice that the laptop sitting next to me is not actually a T14S. It is an older X1 Carbon, which funnily enough is around the same size. We released this video about a week or so ago and incorrectly labelled its processor as a new AMD Kraken Point 1. It is not. It is very important that we bring you accurate information that you can trust to make important buying decisions. So. We pulled down that video to edit in some reshoots, which is what I'm doing right now. But unfortunately, we'd already sent back our T14Ss. Anyway, let me tell you a bit about ThinkPads. They are Lenovo's business range of laptops, but many individuals do choose to buy them. In fact, they have a cult-like following. That is because they are very well built, they are reliable, they have great keyboards, the red track point, and mostly excellent Linux support. If you are shopping for a premium 14-inch ThinkPad, the models can be a bit confusing, so I'm going to quickly do Lenovo's job for them. The ThinkPad T14 is the OG. It is mega famous. It was originally released way back in 2000 when IBM owned ThinkPad, and I think it was the laptop that really popularised the 14-inch form factor. Anyway, you'll find these laptops at most large companies that actually care about their employees. This laptop, the T14S, is a slimmer and lighter version of the T14. To achieve that, it sacrifices the upgradable memory, it has less customizations, and it costs more. For example, here in the USA, you can't get a T14S with a fast refresh rate OLED display. If you want an even smaller laptop than this one, there is the ThinkPad X1 Carbon, which I recently reviewed. It is noticeably smaller and lighter than this T14S. Finally, there is a new premium 14-inch ThinkPad called the X9. It dumps the red track point for a large haptic one, amongst other things. We will have a review out on that laptop coming soon, so get subscribed with the notification bell on for that. Ok, so now we know where the T14S sits in the lineup. Let's get straight down to performance. This Ryzen 7 processor is a less powerful version of the Ryzen 9 processor that we've seen in many AMD laptops to date. It has less cores and less cache. With this processor, you get 3 performance Zen 5 cores and 5 Zen 5C cores, which run at a lower max frequency, so that they are more efficient. All have 2 threads for a total of 16. This processor has the same 5GHz max frequency as the Ryzen 9 365, and the same integrated 880M GPU. In Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks, you can see that this processor's single-core performance is very strong, on par with the Ryzen 9. Its multi-core is worse though. Compared with Intel's Lunar Lake, these processors perform a little better. But as most viewers know, Lunar Lake is a pretty low-performing processor, mostly suited for basic home or office use. Switching to Cinebench, which tests the processor when maxed out, I'm a little disappointed. It's only slightly faster in single core than the ZenBook 14 with the older Ryzen 7 Zen 4 processor. And in multi-core, this new laptop performs worse. Let's now take a look at PowerDraw to form a more complete picture. You can see that this laptop averages 30 watts during a max performance load. That is definitely at the lower end for a 14-inch laptop. Perhaps in the future, when we get this processor in laptops that feed it more power, it will do better. But folks, compare it to the older ZenBook 14 with Zen 4. That laptop is fed about the same amount of power, and as you saw, it performed better. Let's now take a look at power efficiency by plotting how this processor does versus other competitors. Ideally, you want to see high performance for the least power drawn. This laptop is indicated by the two pink dots for its two performance modes. We've even included Intel's new Arrow Lake H here in the dark blue. As you can see, this laptop performs a little better than Intel's Lunar Lake and slightly worse than Qualcomm's Snapdragon X Elite. It kind of joins up with Intel's older Meteor Lake processor, and just like that one, it is significantly behind AMD's highest end Ryzen 9 HX370. Now, given this processor's somewhat disappointing performance, the question is, would you even want to run this laptop for performance tasks? Well, no. Under a max performance load, this laptop gets extremely hot. In fact, this is one of the hottest feeling 14-inch laptops we've tested. And during high performance tasks, fan noise is very noticeable. I think this is due to how ineffective a single fan cooling solution is, like the one in this laptop. 
The X1 Carbon has two fans, and even though its Lunar Lake processor gets a little hotter than this AMD one that is, the laptop as a whole, it feels cooler. In light use, like basic office tasks and web browsing, which is what, in all fairness, this laptop is actually designed for, it is still not ideal. It does remain relatively cool to the touch, but its fans can be heard in a quiet room. They aren't high pitched like a whistling sound, which some laptops do suffer from, but the fans are noticeable. If you do anything intensive on this laptop, like installing a program, they will spin up and you will hear them. Look, if you plan to use this laptop in a loud, open co-working space, this won't be an issue, but coming from the X1 Carbon with Intel's Lunar Lake, which was dead silent, I really noticed the fan noise on this laptop. Also, just to confirm for my light use, I was running both laptops I mentioned on their default balance modes while plugged in. On this mode, both laptops throttled their processors down to around 17 to 18 watts. As you can see, this laptop performs far better than the Lunar Lake X1 Carbon at that power draw. All right, now let's take a look at the integrated GPU. It has the Radeon 880M, the same integrated GPU as the more powerful Ryzen 9 365. But in the case of this specific laptop, it woefully underperforms the Yoga Pro 7 with that Ryzen 9 365 processor. Keep in mind, the Yoga Pro 7 does fit its processor significantly more power, so that probably explains it. Once again, this GPU performs around the same as the 780M in the older ZenBook 14 with the Ryzen 7 Zen 4 processor. That laptop feeds its processor around the same amount of power. This kind of makes sense, as the 880M is only a minor improvement over the 780M. Compared to the ARC 140V integrated graphics of Lunar Lake, normally an 880M comes close, as you can see in the Yoga Pro 7, but in the case of this T14S, it doesn't. If you do plan to do some gaming on this laptop, be warned, it's not the best experience, even for older titles. I played League of Legends on this laptop and had to dial back to medium settings at 920 resolution for a stable experience. I have been able to run that game on higher settings on other laptops with an integrated GPU. Let's now look at battery life, which is a result of many factors. Under a max performance load for 30 minutes on battery, this laptop only drained 13% of its battery. Normally, we'd be cracking open the champagne. But in the case of this T14S, performance when unplugged is so abysmal, it actually renders using it for performance tasks while unplugged, that is, kind of moot. For light use, which is again what you'll probably be doing on this laptop, it does have some pretty long run times. Its smaller battery is offset by its low power draw when unplugged and its low resolution display. On that note, let's talk about the display. It is actually surprisingly nice to look at given its specs. It's a bright 14 inch IPS panel with a matte coating. You don't need as high a brightness to combat reflections on such a display, so its 460 nits of brightness is plenty. But that's where the good parts end. It seems to be only available with a 1920 by 1200 resolution panel that runs at 60 hertz. For a laptop this expensive, that is very disappointing. It means text just doesn't look as sharp as on other panels and motion isn't as smooth. That being said, I didn't find it as bad as I would have thought, and a display with a resolution like this, it does help with battery life as I showed you. But I do think it should come with a slightly higher resolution panel. For example, many coders and Excel warriors like to use these laptops, and small text just doesn't look as sharp. Look, it doesn't need to be as high resolution as the 2880 panel in the X1 Carbon, but somewhere in between would be ideal, and at least a 90Hz refresh rate. Finally, while the colour reproduction is great for looking at content on screen, for those who want to do professional colour work, the gamut just isn't wide enough. The keyboard is very comfortable, and more comfortable than the X1 Carbon. I know this sounds bizarre, as the keyboard is around the same size and both have 1.5mm of key travel, but they feel different. The coating on the T14S's keyboard is more grabby and less slippery, which I like. Also, when you press down, the X1 Carbon's keyboard feels like you are kind of hitting the bottom of the keyboard deck. The T14S's keyboard requires a little more pressure, and consequently feels more cushioned. The fingerprint reader though is in a slightly less convenient position at the top right as part of the power button. I'm really being nitpicky here. Other than that, you get a multi-stage backlight, dedicated special keys in sensible locations, overall a great keyboard. The trackpad on the T14S is one of the better mechanical ones I've used. Tracking feels natural and you don't lose much accuracy when you press down. That's a common issue on mechanical trackpads. One of the biggest differences I noticed coming from the X1 Carbon is that the trackpad just doesn't feel as cramped. It has around a quarter of an inch of extra vertical space. This may not seem like much, but it really does matter on a ThinkPad, when the buttons needed by the red track point take up a lot of space. This all being said, the trackpad is a bit slippery for my liking, and at this price, it clearly should come standard with a haptic trackpad. 
The speakers get loud enough and they are forward facing which is good, but they sound tinny, a little muffled and they lack bass. Lenovo really needs to do better here. Here's how the webcam looks and sounds on the T14S. The colours look pretty decent, but honestly for a 1440 webcam it's pretty bad. I look really grainy. For some reason we haven't talked about the laptop's chassis yet. In 2025 this is a slightly thick, large and heavy laptop for one with a 14 inch display. I still think it's portable enough and I did feel more comfortable using it than the smaller X1 Carbon which as I keep saying just felt cramped. Build quality wise the T14S feels rigid enough and when you pick it up you feel like you're holding a high quality laptop. When you remove your hands you'll be pleased to see that its black coating is about as fingerprint and oil resistant as you're going to get. Looking around the laptop it has a very good variety of ports. Two USB-A ports, two Thunderbolt USB-C ports that charge the laptop, an HDMI port and a headphone mic combo jack. The port placement on this laptop annoyed the absolute crap out of me. Both USB-C ports are on the left side, my dock is on the right side. The cable that came with my dock isn't long enough to reach around the back of the laptop I needed to order another one. Look, first world problems but I really am getting sick of this. Laptops should have a USB-C port on both sides of the laptop. Come on manufacturers, it's 2025. For Linux users, good news. Unlike a lot of recent Intel laptops that we've tested, everything we tried on Fedora 41 worked perfectly out of the box. Brightness up and down, speakers, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, webcam, trackpad, I could go on. Alright, in conclusion, we're quite disappointed here. Firstly, the processor. This is the first time that we've tested a Ryzen 7 Zen 5 one and it's not great. Net net, I feel it's kind of competitive with Intel's Lunar Lake but I don't feel it's better. It has faster multi-core performance at similar power draws but its iGPU isn't quite as good. What really disappointed us though is that it performs around the same in multi-core as AMD's much older Zen 4 processor and is only a tiny bit faster in single core and graphics. I don't think that's good enough, especially considering that this chip came out two years after that one. Clearly we all underestimated how good that Zen 4 processor was and if you are shopping on a tight budget you'll probably want to keep an eye out for laptops with it. When it comes to the ThinkPad T14S as a whole, I did enjoy using it. It's nothing special but it was comfortable to use. The biggest issues that I have with it are its display which is outdated for a laptop in 2025 and its price which is completely outrageous. We paid $1,700 for ours and it's absolutely not worth that price. You can buy an HP Omnibook Ultra with a much more powerful processor for around half as much. If you're sticking to basic office use, the Surface Laptop 7 is a solid choice. It's also around half as much, but be warned on that one, if you do venture out beyond basic office use, some applications and games just don't work on its Qualcomm hardware. And the Surface's battery life is very mediocre. Back on the ThinkPad T14S, if it drops to around $1,200 for this configuration I think it's a great buy. And I'd say for around $1,400 a fair buy. So that is what we're going to enter into our website's recommendation engine. Our website actually takes into account a laptop's price as part of our recommendation process and it only recommends the laptop to you if it hits the price targets we've set. If you're in the market for a laptop make sure to check it out at justjosh.tech. We are trying to solve what is the best laptop for you, where should you go to buy it to get the best deal, and when is the best time to buy it. Folks, we have a lot of new laptops in for review, so I'm off until next time. Go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.